My name is Stephen Coco, and I grew up in a warm, loving Greek family in Chicago. I love my little brother, but he was definitely the black sheep of the family. We got into trouble. Steve is usually the one instigating stuff. Good boy, he loved me, but later he's a little bit sometimes not behave. So I have to give a xylo with a wood spoon, that this one over here. Steven had started this gang for the neighborhood kids. We called ourselves the Warriors. He would come home from school and he would be all beat up and have bruises. This is where it happened. I remember I was just staring at the stars at night. They were so beautiful. And I said, God, I don't see you. I don't feel you, but I know you're there. I want to meet you. That night he touched me. And without even thinking, I said, I will be a missionary. He shared the gospel with me when I was nine years old. Like every day, multiple times a day, he shared the gospel with me. I'm the lead pastor of a church in Lafayette, Indiana. I was heavily into alcohol, into heavy, you know, sex, money, you know, uh, popularity, that's all. That was stuff that was really in my heart at the time. And, uh, he ended up telling me if I wanted to receive Jesus that night while we were driving, and, and I was like, yeah. Steve was the first person to really instill in me just the need to be in the Word of God. He was probably the one and only person I know who, no matter what the context, no matter what the audience, will not hesitate to share the good news. He wanted to go preach to, uh, to a really dangerous neighborhood and I told him not to go, but he insisted. Many people uh, accepted Jesus Christ that day. I said, Steve, I just got my hot dog. I, I don't want to evangelize right now. Can we wait five minutes? And he said, oh, we can't wait five minutes. There's, there's people going to hell. I mean, we as souls need to be added to the kingdom. I said, whoa, dude is passionate. And the good news is that Christ died. I didn't have to be judged. I don't have to go to hell. Jesus said, no one takes my life. Jesucristo dijo, nadie me quita la vida. I give it willingly. I'll accept you. Eu vou te aceitar. I'll hug you. Eu vou te abraçar. I'll forgive you. Eu vou te perdoar. I'll give you eternal life. Eu vou te dar vida eterna. He loves you. And he'll live for you. Amen. I was pretty much compelled or provoked to jealousy by his passion for the lost and my life hasn't been the same since. By God's grace, we've seen 140,000 souls come to Jesus Christ. I said, Stephen, I, I really want to catch on fire. Um, you guys, I, I hear crazy things happening with you guys and I want to see that and I want to be part of it. We believe in leaving a legacy and we will raise up other leaders who have the same passion for evangelism to seek and save the lost. So I've really learned to be a lot more um, just compassionate and loving to people to, to bring Jesus to them. Sobre o que está acontecendo na minha família, ele me explicou tudo. Ele falou, ele tocou na minha mão e mostrou que vai me ajudar. Eu senti uma coisa assim que eu nunca senti na minha vida. I thank God people believe enough to get into heaven, but God wants them to believe enough to get heaven into them. His kingdom come, His will be done right here, right now. Not just talking the talk, but walking in power. goal right now is to see one million souls saved by 2016. We've gotten to see a wide number of people come to know Jesus Christ from orphans to assassins to homeless people to celebrities, people who, whose stories we get to share with the world. We're going to stay on the path God has us on. If He wants us to stop everything we're doing and go reach that one lost homeless man in the corner, that's what we're going to do. Jesus deserves credit. He's the one who died. We preach and He saves them. Jesus died for everyone. 